Gallstones and alcohol abuse are the most common causes of pancreatitis. Other less common causes include hypercalcemia, hypertriglyceridemia, ERCP-induced pancreatitis, autoimmune and familial pancreatitis, anatomic anomalies like pancreas divism, and drug-induced, including thiazides, sulfonamides, and antiretrovirals. Local complications, when present, are defined by the type of acute pancreatitis and the duration of onset. Most cases are acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis, characterized by acute inflammation and pancreatic parenchymal enhancement, whereas 20% of patients develop pancreatic necrosis. Contrast-enhanced CT demonstrates a non-enhancing pancreas or peripancreatic necrosis. Risk of infection with necrosis is about 20% and suspected in patients with prolonged fever, leukocytosis, or progressive clinical deterioration. Antibiotics should not be given prophylactically, but only for a high level of clinical suspicion. Infected necrosis is best treated with antibiotics and percutaneous drainage. Once the type of pancreatitis is confirmed, the local complication is defined by the duration of onset. In acute interstitial edematous pancreatitis, fluid collections that are less than four weeks from presentation or acute peripancreatic fluid collections, homogeneous enzyme-rich simple fluid collections with no surrounding wall. Beyond four weeks, the fluid collection becomes encapsulated and well circumscribed and is a pancreatic pseudocyst. In necrotizing pancreatitis, if less than four weeks, the collection is an acute necrotic collection. Similar to peripancreatic fluid collections, this necrosis is not walled off, and the goal is to wait at least four weeks to allow this collection to mature and demarcate and become walled off pancreatic necrosis, a heterogeneous collection of liquid and non-liquid density that is well-defined. Patients with infected necrosis that do not respond to initial percutaneous or endoscopic drainage or patients with persistently symptomatic sterile necrosis should be considered for pancreatic debridement and should be delayed for a minimum of four weeks to allow for encapsulation and demarcation of necrosis. The step-up approach was initially popularized by the Dutch Pancreatitis Study Group in 2010, demonstrating decreased complications and mortality rates compared to open necrosectomy. Options for pancreatic debridement include open surgical necrosectomy, endoscopic debridement when transgastric access is available, and science track endoscopy and video-assisted retroperitoneal debridement when retroperitoneal access is available.